Hello and welcome back again to another amazing episode. My name is Hayford. If you don't know who I am, I am a content creator, a cinematographer, and this is the Diaspora Transition episode, where I interview people who moved back from the diaspora and currently living on the continent and are doing great things on the continent. So on this episode, I have here with me, you know, a very young woman, very, uh, you know, entrepreneur-like mindset, you know, and she's on the continent. She's also a, a very uh, good journalist i found out not <laughs> not long ago and yeah we have her on the show so without further ado dagny welcome on the show thank you okay thank you for so what's your full name <laughs> just just for the camera just for the camera dagny zenobia zenobia I'm, i like your second name zenobia okay. where did it come from it's actually my pen name okay so it came from initially when i started being a journalist and doing blogging, mm -hmm. I wanted to create a name for myself that I'm defining for myself. Mm -hmm. So that's where Zenobia came Okay. From. It's a very interesting name. Thank you. Okay. So you said you're a journalist. Mm -hmm. That was very interesting. So tell, <laughs> can you tell a little bit about your, your journey, being a yes. journalist so far? Sure, sure. So initially I started, I did study journalism mm -hmm. um, in school. And then I really, prior to that, I really enjoyed storytelling. And with journalism, I enjoyed not only the storytelling aspect, but also being able to tell, of course, human stories, but also shedding light on issues that are important, as well as bringing in creativity with it as well. Mm. So since then, I did freelance work and have been published in a newspaper and a few magazines. What are some of the magazines? Uh, Munaluchi Bridal Magazine, as well as Ethical Style Journal. Okay. And then the bigger story I did was a newspaper talking about the school to prison pipeline. About what? The school to prison pipeline. Okay. Issue that's in the U.S. And okay. Focus more on Texas. Interesting. Wow. So you moved from the U.S. and you are here in Ghana. What happened? What triggered that? Why did you decide to do that? I moved here in 2018, and there's two reasons for mm -hmm. that. The first one actually is the movie Black Panther, oh. which, yes, there's different debates on people It brought you to Ghana? <laughs> <laughs> did you see Wakanda when you came no, here? <laughs> no, I did not see it. I'm still yeah? looking. But um, I really loved the movie, and that was like the first time seeing in a movie some a place depicted that I felt I could belong in. Okay, wow. So I think that planted a seed of considering Africa mm -hmm. outside of what I was already thinking. And then fast forward later in the year, I came to visit, mm -hmm. and I had not been back for about six or seven years wow. since that time. And while I was here, I just I felt there could be possibility here, mm -hmm. and had a few conversations with people. Some people were encouraging and mm -hmm. saying, "Yes, gotta come," um, but taking note that it will take time if you're here, mm -hmm. but you'll be further along, like it'll be worth it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. While others took note that I should definitely not come because everything is terrible and scary and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So then um, I went back home, continued doing research. I was also looking at other parts of Africa, like South Africa and Kenya oh, really? as well. And then I got a job in Ghana. So it just makes sense. Oh, OK. So it. Ghana won because we got a job here. <laughs> so let's say if South Africa gave you a job, you would have been in South Africa. Possibly. 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 OK. OK. That's very interesting. But most. The question that I normally ask people is most diaspora, because when they come, they are very positive that Africa is the way to go. There's a lot of opportunities here. And locals, when I ask locals, they don't really seem to understand that. So I'm asking you, what are you seeing on the continent that me, as a Ghanaian who have never traveled, I have traveled, but a Ghanaian who have never traveled, yeah. it's not seen. I feel. I feel it's not so much that we see something you don't. I think both diasporans and Ghanaians both can are aware mm -hmm. of the vast discrepancies and hypocrisies that are here. I think also we're both also aware of the beauty and possibilities and opportunities that are here. I feel with the comparison, diasporans can possibly be more efficient. But I think because diasporans can have the privilege of leveraging multiple worlds, okay. so they have access to resources or thinking or standards. And they that can are always different. escape. And maybe, maybe. But I, I think because because the realities are slightly different, it's possible we can. 
not necessarily bypass things, mm -hmm. but just uh, adapt to things differently. Do you think you guys have privileges when you come here? Yes. Name one. <laughs> It's true because based, even your accents mm -hmm. can create like paved ways for you. Oh. Where else? I've heard this. Okay. Where um, someone was given an opportunity to um, communicate a brand to some audience or customers because of her accent. Oh. Okay. Where else the professionals didn't get a job. Right. Right. So talking about privileges, yeah. what kind of privileges do you think diasporans who move back on the continent have? I think. Well, again, I think in terms of access to resources, resources, um, as well as yet the the interpretation that we will get opportunities over others is one. But then that there's a flip side to that because then we can be take we are taken advantage of for mm -hmm. the same reasons. Mm -hmm. Two, I guess those would be the two. Okay, interesting. I have seen a lot of Americans mm -hmm. moving back. You know, if you, let's say diaspora is 100%, most 70 moving back are Americans. Okay. And they come with, you know, America is doomed, it's, it's no go area, I'm leaving America. People have so many different stories why they are moving back. I ask myself, what is happening in America that we are having these people move back? Is it the same story for everybody? What do you think is happening in America and why people are moving back? I feel, first, I think it's a different story for everyone. Mm -hmm. The deal of this wave of diaspora moving back is not necessarily new. Mm -hmm. We've been doing this for decades. I think now, because we have social media and the internet, we're able to share more of our stories more uh, timely than before. We have to wait for someone to bring out their book right. years later, kind mm -hmm. of thing. I think currently, uh, Yes, due to the pandemic, of course, the U.S. had a serious hit, mm -hmm. and the workforce had a serious hit during that time, too. I think it got a lot of people to, I think, rethink their priorities for their lives mm -hmm. and feeling a bit more like life is too short to continue tolerating what you didn't want to tolerate anymore. So I think that in terms of seeing more people take the risk or take the leap of doing things they've never done before, I think that's part of it as well. But I would I not, I think there's a, there is a spectrum when it comes to experiencing the U.S. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was not running away. Mm -hmm. I chose that I wanted a new experience. Okay. So they didn't chase you out of America? <laughs> <laughs> no. How do you think Africa looks like in the eyes of the ordinary black American in America. Okay. So the ordinary black American, okay. The black American who does not know anything no. about Africa. Example, someone who grew up in somewhere in, um, let's say, which, which I don't want to, I don't want to get hate from any, any location in the U S but don't I don't have to say that. <laughs> so someone, just the ordinary, um, black American. I think, Yes, there's a portion of ignorance in understanding what's in Africa. Uh, the propaganda, some of the propaganda they might have consumed makes Africa look like it's all poverty, war, and disease. Wow. And, <laughs> but I got, I got to take note, though, mm -hmm. that that's not... I think there's, there is a spectrum within the ordinary black American, that there are some who, yes, are like that, who really are like, why would I go there at all? While there's others who have truly taken upon themselves to teach themselves about Africa and African history, mm -hmm. and do understand the importance of Africa as well. Mm. So there's, because within the US, there has been, among, within the black community, this deal of like, understanding that you've been taught to not mm -hmm. like or not want to go to Africa yeah. for a reason. They've been taught. You mean they've been brainwashed? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. yes. That's very interesting. Because I, I, I had an episode where the person was explaining America very differently. And p people commented that. I don't think I'm seeing America the way you're seeing it. Mm -hmm. I think that is your story. And it is true. But doesn't mean everybody's is, is seeing it like that. So I wanted to know from your perspective. But let's talk about Ghana. You are here. Yes. You are enjoying? <laughs> yes. 
Okay, how are you adapting though? Because it's a different environment, right. different infrastructure. You know, they say America is a first world country and Ghana is a third world country. But you're here. How are you adapting? It's been uh, it's been a learning curve. Mm -hmm. It has been an adventure. Mm -hmm. I think initially getting used to the pace of things. Okay. Uh, the pace. The pace. Okay. Yes, because in the U.S. we're like quick, 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 quick. Yeah. Well, here it's like it was going to be tomorrow, but not really. No. It's like, wait, yeah. what happened? Okay. So yes, as well as understanding, I guess it also goes along with understanding yeah. expectations of what expectations people have, mm -hmm. which is not as it's not stated blatant mm -hmm. really, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. straightforward. Yeah. So it takes time to get a sense of like, what mm -hmm. did you mean by that? Yeah. Kind of yeah. Thing. I mean, most um, diasporans moving back, Ghanaians do have higher expectations. Um, for them, even if they want to do something for you, they expect you to kind of pay them back in a way, you know. But sometimes they get disappointed knowing someone helped me because they thought they're going, they going to get something from me. Does it make sense? That, has that as been in, the case? As in, they're helping, expecting to get paid? Yeah. Mean, expecting to get some kind of payment, mm -hmm. you know. The people say, oh, Ghanaians are very welcoming. Someone said, mm -hmm. Ghanaians are very welcoming. But when they realize they're not getting anything from you, that kind of welcoming spirit just disappears. Has uh, that okay. been a case for you? Sometimes, yes. As then you feel the interaction is primarily transactional, mm -hmm. as opposed to you're really trying to build a rapport, which can, I guess, add to the learning curve of trying to cultivate community. Okay. If everything's a transaction. It's true. Yeah. What would you say has been the major challenges since you moved back so far? Adapting my own expectations for myself of what I could be here or mm -hmm. how long I should be here. Mm -hmm. and, and adapting away from, I guess, the I guess the expectations of, not necessarily Wakanda, but the expectations of like <laughs> wanting more and seeing that, that more is coming but not here yet. So, uh, uh, always, since you said Wakanda, yeah. did it influence you in any shape or form? And did you get disappointed when you, you visited the continent? I think for me, yes, it influenced me to view Africa differently mm -hmm. in terms of this could possibly be an option for me to explore more on the ground. I think, yes, I am disappointed. And not because I was necessarily looking for vibranium because <laughs> we're not there yet but in terms of the wakanda mindset of we're all winning mm -hmm. or unity or supporting each other and wanting to see a system that was different from the u.s with oppression and divisiveness and coming here and seeing a system of oppression and divisiveness and people not taking care of each other and not being compassionate with each other but we're all the same color. Mm -hmm. And so it makes it, you end up having to like reprogram yourself because right. you're so used to seeing that mm -hmm. among all oh, different people are doing that. Okay. Out here, it's all, we're all Africans. So how are you adapting people? though? To the disappointment? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> because what, what do you think you, you did different when you find out it was not exactly what you were expecting? Mm -hmm. Because people come and then you, you just go back. Because right. like, no, this is not what I thought it is. I've met a couple of people who are like, nah, this is not for me, mm -hmm. you know? So what do you think you are doing different? Because you've been here for almost um, four years. Four years. Yeah. So you must be adapting yeah. to be able to, example, there's no water, the shower's not working, you have to go fresh water in a bucket. <laughs> and there's, you know, you sell your, there's a lot of things that comes with it. How you're adapting, that makes it comfortable for you to, you know, live. I think you gotta, for me, I have to maintain the bigger picture for me. As in, I knew when I was coming, it's not for some quick thing type of deal. I understood that well if you're committing to this, you really gotta learn something here. And since I felt called to take the adventure, why would I you felt, drop okay. it off and mm -hmm. be like, well if it's not working immediately, so, forget it. Mm -hmm. So I think I've I've learned a lot and grown a lot in spite of the disappointment. Okay. I feel it's been a good experience. Interesting. Do you would you say let me ask you this. <clears throat> Have you ever felt that listen, I'm tired of Ghana, I wanna pack my bag and leave. Has, have you had this feeling ever since you moved back? They're like, honestly, I'm done. I'm tired. <laughs> Let, let's just, let's call it a quit. I think to pack up and go, no. No. In terms of 
I'm fed up with either the way I'm being treated or the way people are working with me, mm -hmm. yes. But then my my way of dealing with that is, so I'm just gonna have to get another option mm -hmm. or figure out a different way of doing what I'm doing. Right. Which I think is another thing that you learn here. Of mm -hmm. like, you'll make it, you'll mm -hmm. figure out a way, right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Wow, very interesting. I'm enjoying this conversation so far. If it's your first time here, don't forget to like, share, you know, subscribe, stay tuned. Will you say you are comfortable living here in Ghana? Are you comfortable? For the most part, yes. Okay. I think after a while with like amenity stuff, one gets used to sometimes, okay, the power fluctuates sometimes mm. or the internet fluctuates sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, the, the power doesn't fluctuate. It goes off 100%. <laughs> <laughs> so that, I mean, it takes time to get used to. Right. Instead of being like, whoa, what happened yeah. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So that, after a while, I don't, I don't list that as like something that takes away from my mm -hmm. livelihood. I think in terms of interacting with people or trying mm -hmm. to work or collaborate with people, it really depends on the personalities. Even though I've been here for this amount of time, I still feel I'm outside of my comfort zone most of the time. Mm -hmm. Because there's always a... There's always a bit of a gamble mm -hmm. of whether or not the person is open to someone different sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm definitely not here to tell people how to do things or you should do it my way. But like, some people are open to learning a different perspective and some are like, ah, I've been here, I know what I'm doing. So it makes it, that's where the some, sometimes the disappointment comes in because sometimes you feel like you're settling when that happens. You've been through it all. You've been through it all, the ups, the downs, everything. If someone is watching from the US, the diaspora, they want to move back. What would be the three best advice for them? The three best advice? Yes. I would say one, get your financing in order, which I think that's what everyone says, but you can go broke here very quickly. Really? How? Because <laughs> here it's, it's almost just as expensive as in the US. Wow. So She's trying to say Ghana is expensive, yo. It is, it is expensive. Accra. I mean, Accra is expensive. Say other cities, right? Accra is expensive. Uh, yeah. As yeah. Someone said Accra is an extension to the West. You agree with that? To, to the US? Wise, yes. Price wise, yes. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So they should get their money together? <laughs> yes. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I would say the second thing is. Be prepared to change your expectations or mm. be open to allowing your expectations to transform. And third, be open to be open to learning. Because I think you'll find that you have an idea of what you want to do here, but when you're here, it will show you what you're supposed to do. To do. To it doesn't apply. Whatever you learned, the strategies the blueprints doesn't apply in Ghana, will you say? To some right, extent to it does, but you have to literally have to recreate it. I think, yeah, I think you have to create your own, you have to create your own blueprint. That's why everyone out here is figuring it out. Mm -hmm. So all of us who share our stories, mm -hmm. we're not necessarily the blueprint. I mm -hmm. think we're more just showing that you won't die. Like you can, yeah, come, you can but come, you still need to create your own blueprint. So if they want to come, they are convinced, they want to move back. What business do you think they can do and, and still make money? Profitable business, three business. Hey. Or oh, how many you want to give? One? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what's difficult because like, I feel like I don't have the experience mm -hmm. to give you multiple businesses. Okay. Yeah. But I would say one, as a business owner, a business that would be cool to have here is somewhat of like a fulfillment center mm -hmm. who's dealing with the logistics of mm -hmm. getting your stuff moved okay. domestically and internationally. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That would work, but that's big budgets. Every business here, well, in that way, if you want to do things innovative, you will need funding for it. If you want to do something like everyone else is doing, then sure, maybe okay. you can do it with a lower budget. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. And then, how many did you give? One. One more. One more. Yeah. That will be profitable. 
yeah. sustainable. Like it's impossible, almost impossible, impossible to, to, to fail to, at yeah. it. I, I mean, I would say food because food. Everybody eats. eats. Everyone eats. Yeah. And if you can get your menu to be like, you, you would think there's competition because there's a lot of places. Right. When you look at their menus, yeah. they're a lot of the same. Yeah. So you could just flip it a little bit, but mm -hmm. still have the jollof there. Mm -hmm. But oh, flip jollof. The other stuff. Just You're for the know? Ghanaians. <laughs> yes. yeah. Okay. I think almost most people say food, mm. which is which is very interesting. So I think if you're watching, food is the way to go. Let's talk about your business. You've moved back. What are you doing business-wise on the continent? Well, first, my first brand as Dagny Zenobia is digital creator, journalist, vlogging. So from YouTube to writing and photography, I'm sharing my own journey as well as I've interviewed some other people and their wow. journey here. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my second uh, brand, which is more of the business, is Bandoling News. Mm -hmm. And that is that I started here. Okay. It's my Afrofuturistic boutique. I like to call it an intergalactic African life and style experience. Yeah. So currently, it's uh, the product right now is jewelry, but I'm selling that. Okay. Uh, but it's also a whole other like universe in terms of my love for Afrofuturism mm -hmm. and showcasing both Africa and its style. Okay. Now, is it is it one of the products you're wearing? Yes. Okay. The earrings as well as the gold. Yes. It's very beautiful. Thank you. Thank wow. You. So you say Inner Galactic. Why, yes. why that name? Because Bandele Muse is providing products as well as experiences mm -hmm. to give you inner confidence and outer wear. Okay. So that you can be more intentional with your life internally as well as which then reflect externally mm -hmm. for the galactic part. Mm -hmm. Wow. I, I saw that um, one of the brace bracelet yes. is um, crystals yes and then in your description of what it can do it heals even you chakra and all those things very spiritual stuff right it's true it's true that's the reason for the pieces that i created which were all made here in ghana yes wow uh, with a local artisan so uh, i chose the different stones as well as the metals that we mixed because also the metals also had mm. so is this all gold it is gold and brass. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you have 100% gold available? Or no. not yet? No. Not yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it is beautiful. It's Thank very you. shiny. Thank so if it's available, how can people buy it? Go to bandelaynews.com and you can purchase it. This is an e-commerce business okay. right now. So you purchase it online and it'll be delivered to you. Okay. Worldwide? Yes. Worldwide. Wow. That's beautiful. You're doing great on the continent. Thank you. I mean, most Ghanaians who have never traveled believe it's not possible to make it here in Ghana. Do you think it's possible to make it here? I think it is, yes. It is? I think so. I think the... Yes, I think it is. It is. So if someone, when you leave, <laughs> someone is like, honestly, I don't want to make it here in Ghana. Mm. I don't like even try it. I just want to go to the US, UK, whatever. Mm. Advise that African youth listening to that right now. Okay. So the African youth, I want to say... One, we need you, and I totally understand the frustrations that you're dealing with. And I feel like your decision of whether or not to stay or move is more personal. But I think your your bigger picture, regardless of which one you do, is that you need to understand how to play the game. Like, because you're so tech savvy, you gotta understand like everything is a scam. Like it's not just about get the good grades and get the and you know and try to just apply and that's it. You gotta understand the game so that you can infiltrate it from the inside. Okay. Because we need them to be calling the shots back. Okay. Now, if you you are given the chance to change something about Ghana or Africa that you think is is not good and should be changed, what would that be? One change, something you think if we should change, it will go a long way as Africans or as Ghanaians. I would say the mindset. The mindset. So that we can avoid being exploited all the time. Okay. How do we change the mindset? <laughs> <laughs> that, Education? I, I guess. Yes, 
education, but it, it has to be it has to be adapted. It has to be adapted so that it helps you to be the leader in what you're doing, as mm -hmm. opposed to education, what other people are telling you what you should know. Okay. Now, most diasporans have also moved back and couldn't uh, make it here. They got too frustrated. Even some people even didn't make due diligence before coming here. They gave up, they left. If they want to come again, what would be the best three advice for them? They want to come again, give it a second shot. What do they have to do different this time when they are coming? I know you said something similar yeah. in the beginning, but people who be have the experience now. Right. You remember earlier on, they, 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 had, they were they, new. Yeah. Right. Okay. But these people have been here. Yeah. They've lived in the Accra city. It's expensive here. Right. They go to the club almost now and then, spend a lot of money, mm -hmm. live like they live in the US. They see their money like American dollars. Okay. So what do you think they would do differently that would make them be able to live here comfortably in a long period of time without having to suffocate and just leave? Yeah. I mean, if they are choosing to come a second time, I think they're, maybe they become more, get more clear on why you were, you're coming the second why time. Why you're coming? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because if it's a second time, then you already know how to deal with mm -hmm. the other three things I mentioned, mm -hmm. right? So, I think getting more clear on your bigger picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm saying this because I know people who moved back mm -hmm. and left, but they vis they've visited other African countries but somehow they are connected to Ghana in a way that they hated it so much, but they always come back to Ghana. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Cool. and they've been here back and forth three years now and still counting. She knows herself if she's watching this video. So I'm asking so people know what they have to do differently. You know, someone advised to spend your money in Ghana City, don't spend it in Dallas. Oh, okay. I, I, I took someone on a tour when she's from the UK, she came to Ghana and I, I kind of helped her out. And she was tipping people, like when you buy something, mm. you tip 400 Ghana cities. <laughs> she was tipping, right. I see me, she lived in the US. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I never understood that. Mm -hmm. And I saw, I knew she had the money, but that can't sustain you for a long time. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. How yeah. long can you keep tipping people in Ghana, 400 Ghana exactly. cities at a time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my last question is, do you think you moving back to the continent and doing this business you're doing here and everything working, does it all worth it for you? Mm. Yes. I think it is worth it. It's worth it? Yes. Okay. I don't feel like I'm done in terms of there's still a whole lot more for me to experience. Mm. But where I am now, yes, I think it's worth it. It's all worth it. Yeah. Wow. If you have a last message for those watching, what would that message be? Oh. Be open to being inspired. Mm. And if you're coming to Africa, Create your connection on your terms. Yeah. That is very interesting. Thank you so much for speaking to me. Thank you, thank you. If it's your first time here, please like, share, and subscribe. My name is Hayford, if you don't know who I am. And yes, this is the end of the episode. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. And yeah, have a wonderful day. Bye.